Hello, welcome to another analog photography video. Today I'll be talking a little bit about my darkroom equipment. Um, I already explained a little in my color film development video, Capenol film development video and scanning videos. Uh, but I keep getting questions about this in my uh, Lomography Lomo Home. So I figured that a more detailed video might be helpful. So here we go. If you just want to develop films, then you don't actually need a full-blown uh, dark room. A little uh, old bathroom with no windows, with no light would do. Or you can get a dark room bag that I'll show uh, later on in the video. Or I even developed some films uh, under the covers in the bedroom with the curtains closed and the lights off. The only thing that you need to make sure is no light gets through. Uh, film is very sensitive to light. That's how it gets exposed in the camera. But if you expose it to more light, then uh, your results will have either light leaks or will totally be burned depending on how much light hits the film. So the only important thing in film developing or the most important thing in film developing is that no additional light hits your film. So if you're going to do it in an old bathroom with no windows, make sure that uh, you don't see any lights from underneath the door or from the sides. Or if you have a dark room bag, make sure you close it totally. Or if you are going to take a risk, like I, I used to do, and do it under the covers, just get in there and stay a couple minutes before, well, seconds before you start editing to make sure that your eyes adjust to the darkness and you don't see any leaks from anywhere from the corners or from the sides. Uh, a measure for how dark the dark room should be is... When you're in the dark room, uh, before you change your uh, film from the metal canister into the tank that I'll show soon, if you do like this, you shouldn't be able to see your hand. So make sure it's 100% dark. Other than that, you will need some equipment, of course. Uh, for this, you're going to need a tank. This is a Patterson brand uh, darkroom tank for three 35 millimeter films or two medium formats. Um, it's, I used to use one that was smaller for 235 or one medium format, but uh, since I got this one, I realized that it's easier to manage. And you, as I said, you get three rolls done at the same time if you're shooting 35 or you get two rolls done if you're shooting medium format which makes it more practical and faster and this comes with um, the, the reels inside i got three of them and you have the top the tank itself and you also have uh, this middle part that when you um, close this up, no light gets through. Originally, when you buy it, you also have a plastic uh, cap here, which I lost over time, but even like this, it doesn't let any light through, so it's safe. Um, these are the 35 millimeter reels. You put your film through here and you slide it up and down so that the film goes through one layer at a time all the way and as i said this is for 35 millimeter uh, but it is convertible so uh, i can actually develop medium formats with this what i do is mm, turn it pull it and then um lock it back so like this it's gonna be for medium format film and like this, it's going to be for 35 film. And if uh, you shoot also 110, which is um, one centimeter thick, uh, you will need a separate one because this doesn't uh, collapse any more than 35. So uh, for um, 
one ten films, you're gonna need a separate reel, but otherwise most thirty fives are convertible into medium format. And when developing, you put your film in here, put the middle. If you're gonna do multiple, then you just add on top. In goes, and then you lock it so that it is totally closed and here you can touch and make sure that it's not crooked or anything other than this you're gonna need uh some measuring cu cups so i got these two and uh, these are to mix my chemicals and also pour my chemicals into my tank and I use this one, which says one, for my developer. And I use this one, which says two, for my fixer. And I also have um, this little thing here that when I'm uh, pouring my chemicals back that I use. Uh, regarding the chemicals, the developer in black and white is not reusable, so you need to dump it. Cup and all is same, you need to dump it after one use, but the fixer you can use up to five or six times and the color chemicals you can reuse. So uh, this might come in handy if you're gonna be doing something like that. You will also need a um, thermometer. Uh, the black and white film development should be done at 20 degrees Celsius and the color development should be done at 38 degrees Celsius. So with this, you can measure how hot or cold your uh, chemicals, the liquids are and adjust accordingly. Let's see the dark room bag. If you don't have any place that you can turn into a dark room, then this will come in really handy. And here we go, it's, it's a huge black, um, sort of like a sweater basically. And it has here um, a zipper. Where's the opening? Here we go. It has a zipper that you can put everything inside and then you close this up and also uh, close this part so it's pretty secure and then uh, you put your arm to one side and your other arm through the other side and you can transfer your negative into your tank inside this thing and you can do it even while shooting a video watching TV I don't know um, well, just sitting with friends anywhere, basically. So as long as you have this, it's totally safe to open your film inside. This is basically it if you're just going to be film development. And you will, of course, need used films. You will need a tank, measuring cups, and you will need chemicals. The chemicals will depend whether you're going to be doing uh, black and white and or uh, color film development and also there are different brands out there you can choose from for black and white I usually use the Kodak D76 or Ilford Ilfosol 3 and then I use the Ilford rapid fixer uh, for my black and white films and for color I usually use the Tetanol uh, C41 kit that they sell uh, you can buy that one as one liter, uh, two and a half liters and five as far as I know. So uh, how much chemicals you will buy will definitely depend on how many films you want to develop or how fast you want to develop them. Uh, the chemicals uh, go to waste after a while, they go stale. So uh, I suggest that you start off with a bunch of films. First, a couple films that you're not going to be too sad if you mess up. And then do it often so that the chemicals are still fresh when you're developing. If you also want to scan your own negatives, I suggest that you get a negative scanner. Uh, you can check out my negative scanning video. I'm going to link it up top. 
uh, where it's where I show how you can uh, scan negative films. I'm using the Canon 9000 uh, Mark II F, Canon Mark II F1 9000, whatever. And I quite like it because it's faster than the previous Canon model that I used to use. And it's definitely better than the HB I had like 12 years ago. So if you want to do this regularly, then I suggest you invest a little money into a nice scanner. Uh, there, the most popular models, as far as I know, are uh, the Canons and the Epsons. Uh, you can check out different models online or in technological stores that sell like computer equipment. And my Canon came with um, the necessary um, attachments for 35 millimeter medium format and slides. Uh, since I also shoot uh, with the spinner and sprocket rocket from Lomography that expose the film holes. I got this digitalizer and I also have this in 110 uh, because my scanner didn't have the necessary equipment for 110 film. So I got this in a smaller format for my 110 films. I don't shoot too much, but still it's nice to have it on hand. And after the scanning and the development, of course, uh, if you want to also print your photos, there comes the big darkroom equipment that you're going to need. If you want to print your own photos, then you're going to need a full-fledged darkroom. And what I mean by that is you can consider it like a small kitchen almost. Because on the one side, you will need your um, enlarger, which will allow you to turn your negative into an actual print. By putting your negative up top in a slot and then... Uh, projecting it downwards onto um, light sensitive paper in order to get your print and you will also need um, running water and a couple trays the tray size will depend on how big you want your prints to be so if you want your prints to be like a letter or a4 size then you're gonna need something a little larger than that so it should essentially be big enough for your um, paper to fit and you're gonna need one tray for your uh, paper developer one tray for running water and one tray for your uh, fixer the Ilford rapid fixer is good for both film and paper so it's you can use it for both but the paper developer is separate so you need one developer for your negatives and one for your papers and you need the running water so that after the developer is uh, done you are gonna rinse the paper off and then put it into the fixer and that's why I said that your dark room should essentially be like a small kitchen with the running water on one side and your trays and then on the other side or next to them uh, you will have your enlarger your um, chemicals any other things that you need such as your papers and I've never developed color films well color paper prints so I don't really have too much information on that but as far as black and white goes uh, you initially do a test print uh, which means that you expose the paper to your negative 5 seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds 20 25 you develop it uh, and then go out into the light and see your results and then decide how long the actual printing uh, time should be. Let's assume 25 seconds. So you go back into your darkroom and develop your negative from your negative the paper for 25 seconds. And then you do the developer water fixer and then hang your film up for um, drying, hang your paper up for drying. And that's why your dark room should be uh, enough for you to be able to move around, uh, be able to hang your prints for them to dry and have all your equipment in it. And when you're developing papers, uh, you get to have some lights as opposed to film. So a little red light bulb 
that's uh, suitable for dark rooms is also sold in darkroom equipment stores and you can use that to basically be able to see what you're doing and that's pretty much all you need basically so this pretty much sums up everything I'm going to be saying about dark rooms and how to set one up and how many equipments or different stuff you need one suggestion is that uh, if you have a full-fledged dark room keep everything in there if not if you're just developing films then put everything in a cupboard or in a box somewhere all together uh, make sure you mark your chemicals so that it's not um, mixed with like a fruit juice or water or something like that because they're poisonous so you need to be careful and make sure you don't um, inhale the chemicals too much because it's risky and other than that if you have any questions just drop me a line and i'll get back to you uh, as soon as i can and if you like this video subscribe to my channel hit that bell button and uh, like this video so every week you'll be seeing a new one bye